Hey, what is up everyone? It's your friendly neighborhood redneck Rick and I am coming at you today with a product review. It's not homebrew related, but it is cooking related and I know it's a lot of people do cooking videos and I kind of want to do a product review on my newest addiction and that is smoking. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it guys. Alright ladies and gentlemen, there it is in all of its glory. My new Oklahoma Joe's slash Charbroil Highlander. Great little pit, great little pit, has a few issues um, I wanted to address here, kind of give some people some insight because I have not found a video on this smoker other than a couple of pictures or videos of guys just cooking on it uh, with no, you know, no explanation or nothing. So uh, I thought I'd give a little video, a little review, and uh, hopefully somebody at Charbroil sees this or somebody shares it with Charbroil and they kind of make some adjustments to their product because there's a few things on this thing that... You know, if you're, 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 you're celebrating this name, because I know the gentleman that started this company in Oklahoma, building these smokers. Um, he's a close personal friend of my father's, and uh, if he's seen these now, how they're doing them, I, I'm almost afraid the man would probably have a heart attack, because uh, they still use his brand right here. They still use his brand. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, Neil say... It ain't really up to snuff of what those smokers used to be. I've seen a few of them. I've actually had uh, a couple of friends that work for the company. And, uh, wow. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to get down to this right here. This is the main thing right here. You know, that, that's where your food goes. That's good stuff because that, that's a good thing. But this is the heart and soul of this machine. As you guys know, if you do any smoking uh, and you have an offset smoker, it's your firebox. Number one, you should never have to do this to a firebox to keep the consumption of wood down to a minimum to where you can build an efficient fire. And as you guys can see here, we also have it run clear around because there is four bolts holding this piece to this. What the hell? Uh, where they, you know, I understand you gotta save on cost of building stuff to make money, but when you do it like this, your quality slips, then you don't sell much of the product. Or Maybe that's, their, maybe that's their goal, is to sell one that falls apart to go out and buy another one. If it was me, I'd buy one that lasts me three years. I ain't buying the same damn thing because I want a longer time out of it. But, uh, yeah, they'll say it, it, it does work now because I put like an almost an entire tube of RTV around it, uh, 650 degree gasket maker anyway, and it works good now. But I think they could probably make that a solid piece and uh, maybe make this door a little bigger because uh, once I freeze my ass, open the door from freezing my ass off, but how are you supposed to put any wood in there if you got a fire built? I mean, come on. Come the hell on, people. Let me shut that door. <laughs> all right. <laughs> now, let's move over here to where all the goodies come out of. Um, first gripe. I have no fire in here. And this son of a bitch is almost 600 degrees. Yeah, turbo. Buy a little, spend a little extra money, get a quality thermometer, put in your goddamn pit for sake. Uh, anyway, sorry about, sorry about the cousin, but uh, all right, guys, girls, let's talk about this here. You guys see this here? I had to do this because this lid leaked so bad I couldn't even keep my temperatures in here. Uh, that is a product by the name of Lava Lock. Uh, for any of you guys that have a leaking smoker or having issues, you know, you can use that stove gasket shit. Um, go to Amazon, buy this stuff. It's self-adhesive. You stick it on. You do a small burn in your pit. Um, you hook a little weight to your handle, you know, hold the door down. Then let it cool. This stuff will never come off. Never. You will tear this material before you get the glue off. I mean, no kidding. Uh, and it seals this thing tight as hell. I mean, I have zero loss of smoke from pit to here. The only smoke that comes out is right here where it belongs. And uh, it works great. But uh, anyway, let's get into a little more in-depth about the pit here. You have uh, a 20-inch food chamber and uh, or main chamber. Uh, there's your opening to your firebox. Of course, you guys can't see it, but uh, you also have uh, charcoal. You have a briquette grate that goes in here. You can take them out or put them in if you want. You can make this some bit a big old, you know, 30 inch uh, charcoal grill if you want to. Um, there are also these two little grates here. We've got two of them. 
they go in the firebox. So if you're cooking some ribs or brisket or pork butts or whatever you're doing here, and you know, those take a long time. You want to make some burgers. You open that up, you slap your little deals in there, you cook you some burgers over your fire there. Uh, and you just, you know, it's a multifunction, it's a good pit. Uh, I have done four cooks on this thing so far. Last one turned out phenomenal. Uh, it was some uh, St. Louis style ribs and they just were amazing. So uh, I, I, I would highly recommend this grill if you just want a temporary one or something. Now if you take care of it, I'm sure this pit will last you a few years, you know, five, six years. Uh, as long as you keep it clean, maintain it, take care of it. I, I think it will would make a good smoker. But I, I just, these things here just grab my ass. Because uh, I, I just, quality is one thing with me. Um, I, w I was in a fab shop, I was a fab shop super, uh, a fab shop supervisor for five years at an aircraft company. And, uh, you know, quality is a big thing to me when I'm spending my hard earned money these days. And it just gripes my butt, man. Uh, so like I said, if anybody from Tarbroil sees this, Please, guys, update your product, update your quality control a little bit because, you know, us hard work working Americans get out here and buy your product, and then we've got to go out and spend another, you know, $100 to get the damn thing to work right, you know. Um, as for the, if I show, if I, I don't remember if I showed you the paint there, they did send me another bottom out, but I'm not replacing that one right now because I'm going to just paint it. Because the other one will do it too. So I guess I've got a backup if this one ever dies. But uh, anyway, guys, that is the Oklahoma Joe's by Char Brawl Highlander. Um, I highly recommend for a price tag of $2.89 that I picked it up at Walmart for. I highly recommend it to anyone. Um, you know, maybe you won't have such a problem as I did with the lid leaking or this. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, they're mass produced, so you never know what you're going to get. But I do highly recommend it. Um, I will be upgrading next year to another smoker uh, from the big bad company of Yoder, Yoder Smokers. If you guys don't know who they are, um, check out yodersmokers.com. Uh, go over and check them out. They've got their professional competition style pits and uh, they are fantastic. Made right here in the great state of Kansas that's flat and cold. But, <laughs> oh wait, I thought I'd give you an update guys. We went from 600 to 350. By God, it works great. All right, guys. This is your friendly neighborhood redneck home brewing smoking Rick. Wait, that didn't sound right. Uh, nonetheless, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, I'm going to be trying to do some cooking videos once I get moved into my new home and we get a little better weather. Uh, it's like 30 degrees here and it's cold as hell and snow. And, uh, but anyway, I'll try to get some uh, smoking videos out for you guys uh, here in the near future. I'm going to try to get a new camera so I'm not using my phone. So anyway, this is Rick. Happy brewing. Happy cooking.